I'm Mark Pollard. I've been a match angler for over 40 years. I've enjoyed success on every type of venue and now it's time to put it to the ultimate test. The Matrix team will book me into matches in the UK and across to Europe on venues that I've never fished before. It's up to me to crack the venue in one single practice session. And then I'm putting my reputation on the line in the open match the next day. Will I crumble under pressure? Or will practice make perfect? Hello and welcome to another episode of The Practice. We are just on our way to Hollyhead because we're having a bit of a road trip on this one and we're heading out to Ireland. Now, the day ain't off to the best of starts because the weather is absolutely horrendous. It's blowing a gale, absolutely chucking it down and we already know of a three hour delay for the ferry crossing. Uh, the sea is really rough delay coming back from Dublin which has held us up as well so we're just hoping that we can cross today and then uh, I think even if we get across it's only the start of it there's a massive storm coming across the Atlantic and that gives uh, 7 mile an hour winds and torrential rain for the next couple of days in Ireland so the fishing is going to be interesting but, uh, Holly's just about 20 miles behind me just spoke to him so we're going to meet up with him soon, get my gear in his van and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get on the ferry and get across to Ireland. Well, we're just in the queue, waiting for the ferry. It is, what is it? 3.18. 3.18, we should have been leaving at two and it's gonna be about half past four, I think, when we leave. It'll be two and a half hours delay. Yes. Due to, well, it's not windy now. No, the, weather, the weather's improved a lot and hopefully uh, it won't be too bad the next couple of days. Tomorrow is meant to be absolutely horrendous. When I was over in Ireland back in end of September, uh, the Horseshoe Fish Festival that I fished on the Wednesday um, it was it was unbelievable there were trees down and everything the match went ahead or was going ahead and it would have carried on but I, w I was on uh, Garadice on Church Shore and I wouldn't be able to fish it because it was that windy the amount of trees that come down the lads were on the section at uh, Crom River and Crom Lake a big tree had come down over the front the gate entrance it was massive and they couldn't get into fish anyway so the match was called off but i'm glad it was because um if you'd got a heavy platform with a box on where i was it would have bl it just blown it off without you sitting on it so you'd never got set up let alone put a line in um so we'll find out when we get over there because we're on the practice session tomorrow at carry bridge and then the match on the thursday so i'm looking forward to it but i just hope the weather dies down and we can get to fish properly because if you can't and it's you're weather orientated, you, you can only fish certain things, so we'll see. I'm just hoping we don't throw up on the boat. Oh yeah, we've got that yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get on the boat and see you on the other side.
Right, we, uh, we're just on the ferry now and uh, we're finally making it across. We are, what, three hours behind schedule? Yeah, got another hour and a half, maybe. Yeah, but it's... It's a seat. little bit. Yeah, <laughs> a little, it's a little bit, but no, we're, uh, we're getting across. Uh, what's planned for tomorrow? We're going to go to uh, the bait shop in Enniskillen, uh, go and see Dave and Simon there, uh, get some bait, um, might do a little bit of filming showing the river there, the urn system, going by the castle. Uh, and then it's off to Kerry Bridge. Um, I think Tony Green's going to come with us and show us the venue that we're fishing the match on Thursday. Um, hopefully the weather's not too bad. It, they do give horrendous weather conditions, but it has eased. And they're saying the weather's going to be more coming towards England, so we won't know until tomorrow until we get there. Um, if it is too bad, then we won't be able to fish, but hopefully we can fish. I can practice a few things and work out a method for the match if, the following day. If not, it'll be a case of having a walk round and then straight into the match blind on well, yeah, Thursday. Yeah, if I can't fish, then it's just going with the knowledge I've had from six years of fishing festivals in Ireland, um, using that knowledge and just fishing the match and just working way through the match as it goes. Um, I do know, obviously, it's not a big feeder chuck because it's not a great big, it's not a great big lock. It's the river, um, but there is talk if they can get a section in the yacht club or in the boatyard where we've got gone a boat across to it that's very good fishing. Um, they haven't been granted permission before, um, but uh, they've got permission to put some pegs on there if needs be, depending on the wind. So I spoke to Tony Green. He said, whatever happens, even if it is windy come Thursday they'll be able to get the pegs so we're not too badly affected by the wind. So, so looking so forward to it's it. It's not a venue you fished before then? No, no, obviously you say Ireland's all the same. It isn't really, a lot of it changes. Um, and I would have thought, in my head coming over, I'm thinking it may be more pole as it gets a little bit harder, maybe the pole works better, but you don't know, that's fishing. You know, if we all knew, we'd know it and win every match, so. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, get off the ferry, head up to Enniskillen and get sorted in the morning and see everybody on the bank. Definitely, yeah. Well, we're out at the front of uh, the Killy Evening Hotel. We arrived here late last night, about half eleven, due to the delays with the winds yesterday on the ferry. Um, we've got up nice and early this morning, we've had breakfast. It is windy, but it's fishable at the moment. A uh, little bit of drizzle, but they do say forecast for it to get a lot worse. Um, but we're gonna Take a trip down now to the bait shop, um, get some bait, and then off to the venue. And hopefully, we can have a practice, um, weather permitting. So, let's get some bait and have a look. Morning. Just left the shop, I got my bait. Uh, we're following Tony Green, who's taking us to Kerry Bridge. Although I know where it is, I've not uh, been down there before. I've seen the sign, uh, sign posted to Kerry Bridge. Um, but before we go down to Kerry Bridge, he's just popping down to have a look down the neck. Because of the wind and how they're giving it, still windy tomorrow, uh, not as windy, um, but gusts of wind. I'm going to drive down and have a look at the and neck and just see what it looks like because Tony's on about maybe moving the match to there. Um, now I have fished Bell and neck uh, once and that was just back in September um, in the Fermanagh Cup and I had um, I think six kilo of small roach, a few on the pole but mainly on the feeder. Um, but obviously with winter fishing they're just trying to find what bit would be the best and for the weather. Um, but we're gonna have a practice at Kerry Bridge, uh, but we're just gonna have a look at Ballonek just to see what it looks like. Because the wind's gonna be the same direction tomorrow. Um, 
but hopefully we'll have a good match tomorrow either way. Even if I practice Kerry Bridge and they switch it to the ball of the neck, I think the fishing will be similar, a bit of tip, a bit of pole, but maybe a bit of whip. Well, I don't know until I've had a go, but um, whatever rain we get won't affect the the river level, uh, although it is very low at the moment, Tony said in the shop, so we'll see, that's fishing. Well, we've arrived now at Kerry Bridge. We've been to Ballinac, had a look there. Now we've come to Kerry Bridge, we're in the boat yard where Tony Green, bless him, has got uh, permission of the landowners to fish the match here tomorrow and we can practice it today. We've had a look further up near the bridge where some of the pegs have been, but the wind's horrendous and uh, it's dangerous fishing off the platform. You can see how windy and rainy it is now. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna have a fish here now. Well, oh, I could go at the pub actually. No, better not though. We're going to fish here now, I'm going to fish between the boats here, between the jetties. I'm not getting on either of the jetties because it's quite high up. It's sort of off their back. Um, I'm just going to fish the feeder because if I fish a pole, I'm set right back. Um, and I just feel I'll be wasting my time. Um, so I'm going to set the, pole, uh, set the feeder up. I'm going to take you through my bait mixes. Uh, the mix I'll be using is something I've got confidence in that I've done well over here. Um, I used it this year to add some great results on it. Uh, it's the Hinders mix, it's uh, my supercharged natural black mixed with a little bit of brown crumb. Uh, I'm going to float some maggots off, you'll see how I do that. Um, I have a few worms out, chop a few worms up, I've got some casters. Uh, a little trick up my sleeve, I've got some fluorescent pinkies that if it's very hard um, they do work. Uh, a lot of these natural venues, especially out here, fluorescent pinky can be a good bait, whether you're tipping a couple of maggots with it or a worm with a uh, fluorescent pinky, uh, it does work very well. So I'm going to give that a little try today, see if that works on the feeder. Or a few hours that I'm having a little practice down here with. Um, but the weather is horrendous. It's a shame, but can't change that. Uh, but hopefully tomorrow isn't as bad. But if the weather is as bad with the wind it's a little bit dangerous uh, if Tony thinks it is then where we just had a look at Ballin and Neck we're going to go there where you've got platforms the wind or the direction the wind forecast uh, for day and tomorrow is off your back so however windy it is you're sort of sheltered and it's fishable and that did look nice there um, but I fancy a go here so I'm getting my gear out now have a couple of hours see how we can get on I mean Craig can only film what I'm doing here with his GoPro because uh, the way the conditions are. You can see we're all steamed up in the van now with it raining and windy. Um, but hopefully, I'm quite excited to see what I can catch because they say in this bit here in this boatyard they get some big hybrids and there's chance of skimmers and some nice roach. So it's something different, never fished here before. Very excited about it as I do going to Ireland anyway um, and really looking forward to it. So let's get my kit out, get set up and just see what I can catch. One Christmas morning, me daddy rode home. Mother was terribly cross. Me father said, darling, it's Christmas, my lovely. And I said, I don't give a toss. I spent all the morning cooking the goose, and I peeled the potatoes as well. You're drunk as a skunk, and you know flipping news. It's another miserable Christmas. Look at the state of your father, she cried He's as drunk as a drunkard could be It's always the same, he just puts me to shame But for all of the neighbours to see I spent all the morning cooking the goose And I peeled the potatoes as well You're drunk as a skunk and you're no fame in use It's another miserable Christmas The 
fell asleep in a big broken heap at the foot of the old Christmas tree. Then bound over and knocked the tree over and mother said, oh dear me. I get up all morning cooking the goose and I'll hear the potatoes as well. You're drunk as a skunk and you're no blinking use. It's another miserable Christmas. Well, we're back at the Kiliathan Hotel. Um, whether you can hear the wind still, but you can see how rough it is outside, raining, wind still blowing in gales. Um, I've practiced at Kerry Bridge between the boats. Uh, Tony Green, who's running the match tomorrow, he's come down and sat there as well. Um, we've probably fished, I would have thought, two and a half, three hours. I mean, my feet were freezing. I sat in the water. I wish I'd used me, uh, me thermal boots and me bit of a brace, because I feel absolutely froze. Um, I floated some maggots off, um, put them in probably half inch of water, uh, left them for about 10, 15 minutes, and I put them into a bucket of water and scooped off me floaters. Um, I only fished the feeder, because you couldn't have fished the pole. And if you was fishing the pole, you'd probably want 16 metres to get into probably three foot of water, so it would be a waste of time. And if you was on the jetty fishing the pole, if there was no wind, you'd be in the deeper water. So I'd be just fish the feeder. Um, the mix I used was my Hinders Natural, Supercharged Natural Black, with a bit of added brown crumb, just to give it a bit of food value. Um, I used it quite dry, as always doing the feeder. Um, I then chopped up a few worms, so some casters and some dead maggots. I used one of Horizon feeders, uh, one of the medium ones with, um, I plugged it with ground bait, filled it with um, dead maggots, a few casters and the chopped worms, then just plugged it with the ground bait and I chucked it at 40 turns. I had a count of 13 there. When I caught my first fish, it, it was like an ice block, I was cold myself, it was so cold. Um, Tony had bites straight away, he had a couple of roach. And cut us a long story short, I probably had six fish. I had a few nice hybrids, but I pulled out of a couple. Um, I shortened the tail down. I fished 014 to a 14 hook. Uh, I tried two for row pinkies, which normally works very well, but because I wasn't getting many bites, I sat for a while on two for row pinkies, a couple of casts, nothing. Went back to two floating maggots. Um, I had a couple of good bites, uh, but I'm just little taps, not really pulling it round. Um, I felt there's fish there, but only a few of them really feeding. Um, Tony caught more than I did, he had a couple of nice hybrids and he lost a couple of hybrids as well. Um, he fished floating maggot as well. Um, there are some fish there, but it just, it just depends on the weather. Because I said to Tony, will it be here tomorrow? He's not sure, he's thinking about maybe moving it to Ballon and Neck that we looked at, um, and the wind was off your backs there. But it just depends on the weather tomorrow, because if, if it is like this, wherever it goes, going to be very difficult. Um, I think it'll put a good few anglers off as well. Uh, but it's so cold. Um, the, water t the water temperature had dropped dramatically over the past six or seven days Tony was saying and as you know anywhere if the water temperature drops then the fish don't feed um, I enjoyed it even though it was cold um, but it was very very windy the wind started to turn around the last half hour 20 minutes the wind turned round um, and we um, the fishing didn't change it was just odd bites and whatever I seemed to do didn't make the fish feed anymore so um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow but then not knowing where it is I've had a practice I haven't had a go on the pole I've just fished the feeder um, the main thing if anything I've learned in this short session in this practice uh, today is probably be patient um, you're not looking for loads of fish and where I want to be active chucking the feeder and all the time put some bait in I think you just got to just cast in now and again and just sit there um, because the fish 
and not responding the bait going in. They just have a little pick when they want to. Um, although they, I feel there's a lot of fish there. There's only a small percentage of them will have a feed. And probably the best part of the session was the last 20 minutes, half hour, and maybe time of day as well. Because you know, of all fishers, be if you're fishing a commercial or, or natural fishing, as we're doing here, the last part of the match is where your best part. Um, and it was in this short session. So maybe be patient, and hopefully the better part of the match tomorrow, depending where it's put, will be the latter part. Well, and all that remains now is, I'm going to take Mr Butterfield over to the Angus Rest uh, at uh, Ballyconnell, see Francis, and sample one of his small steaks, and massive. So, that's where we're going now. Well, we just pulled up at Ballon the Neck. Um, I got a phone call late last night. I had a lovely meal at the Angler's Rest with Francis. I was chatting to him about the two venues because Tony said if the wind, if the weather looked or predictably bad, they transferred from Carry Bridge to Ballon the Neck, and and Ballon the Neck is where we've arrived now, where it is. At the moment, it just it doesn't seem like it's windy, but they predict real heavy gales, uh, and it's off your back here, so. Um, it'd be dangerous at Kerry Bridge because not everyone um, is off the bank. Some are on platforms and the water level's low, although they've had a lot of rain and you're too high up. So um, Tony's moved the match to here. So I have fished here once uh, and that was this year in the six years coming to Ireland. And that was up in the next field that I don't think we're in. Um, so we're all on landing stages and it looks nice, nice and comfortable. So I'm all excited. Let's just hope we can catch a few fish and um, have a result. just started, um, I was probably a few minutes late in starting. Um, I've set up a little feeder on chucking about 35 turns, just as, for the first 15 minutes, say, just to see if there's anything out there. We've seen a few fish top, and I've gone at 11 metres and seven metres, making the 11 metre my main line. I've got about seven and a half foot, and um, I've put about five balls on the 11 metre line and a couple on the short line and hopefully catch some loads on the pole. I've got a longer rig maybe to hand, but with elastic, just a cushion if I hook a bigger fish or hook a hybrid. 
Um, but we've seen a few roach tops, so I'm coming on catch on the pole. But I thought I'd just start on the tip first, just let that settle on the pole line. I've drawn a peg like says a good peg on one off the end. Um, but it's a better end this end, so hopefully we catch a few fish. Looks like they're fishing the pole to me left straight uh, to me right straight away. And Tony on the end peg. He started on the tip and he's had three or four small fish straight away. So hopefully if I don't catch on this I will on the pole. Halfway through the match now, um, the wind's picked up a little bit, but not like they said. Uh, I started on the feeder for about half an hour, I was going to say for about 15 minutes, we'll give it half hour because so I was about to come off it. I had a small roach and I had another bite, and then that was it. Gone on the pole, and um, at the moment now, the best rig seems to be the two gram rig rather than the gram and a half rig. The best bait seems to be double fluoro pinky. I've been fishing red maggot as well. I just started plopping an odd ball in where I've been cupping the balls in. I tried my shorter line, nothing, but I'm, I'm getting bites most runs through, but small roach. Uh, a lad below me, Tony, started off well on the tip, and they had a few on the pole. And then the chap above me had a big ivory, three pound. So he's ahead of me, definitely, at the moment. But um, I'll just keep these coming. I might put, you know, put a little weight together, but... That's a better one, but um, it's just keeping them coming. You get a run a real small roach. So I've heard further up towards the end of the match, length towards peg one, they had some hybrids early. I don't know if they had them on the pole or the or the tip and a couple of skimmers. But uh, I'll plod away at this. I'm happy doing this. It's, it's not too windy, so I can present it okay. But a heavier rig seems better. That's a two gram rig. Much better since I picked up in the Grand Laugh rig. And I'm just edging it through. I'm probably a float over depth, but I can run it through. The bottom's quite clean. I did pull out a decent fish, though, about 20 minutes ago. Whether it's a big perch or a hybrid, I won't know. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, um, this is my best bell now, so let's hope this keeps up. Beautiful Irish roach.
was about 45 minutes to go. I'm still catching ropes steady, but small ropes. So that's what weight I've got now while I'm doing. Um, but um, I just hope this carries on to the end. You get an odd better one, but you, they don't just keep coming and they get a run of little small ones. But um, at least it's fish and I'm putting fish in the net. So let's hope this next 45 minutes they carry on and put another pound or so in the net. You see the small fish, but then you get an odd better one in between. left and uh, there's a big rain shower coming typical to pack up but it always rains in Ireland um, it slowed down a little bit for me um, I've heard there's a five pound bream up there I know the lad next to me has got a three pound hybrid um, and there's a few skimmers up there but um, just carry on doing this next 10 minutes and uh, get packed up get weighed in and see how we fare Well, you've seen the way in. Um, I've had a fantastic couple of days out here. Um, anyone that's considering coming to Ireland, and obviously we can't able to film this at the worst time. There is a lot of fish over it. It's brilliant fishing, great accommodation wherever you stay, and it, it's like a stepped-up England. That's how I find it. Uh, the sort of fishing out here. Um, you've seen the way in there. I'm quite pleased. I finished third. I've had um, five kilo two seventy, a lot of roach, but a lot of small roach. I had my two best roach probably the last fifteen minutes of the match, two roach that I netted. I could have gone on the tip the last half hour, and if I had, that would have cost me. I wouldn't have framed. Um, as you can see, there was some big fish caught as well because there's a lot of colour in the river. There was a couple of bream, a few big hybrids, and a few big roach as well. Um, it's when you're fishing a match whether it be over or anywhere else. It's so important making the right decisions. And I felt I made the right decision. I started on the tip and then to fish the pole. And I was still catching fish. I felt the bloke to my right had beat me because he had a big hybrid and he was catching ropes. But the hybrid wasn't as big as what I thought it was. I thought it was about three pounds. It ended up being about a pound and a half. And he was catching ropes I thought were bigger than mine, but he's a small rope. So anyone, if you're catching, you always think the guy next to you is catching more than you or catching bigger fish than you. So I'm glad I stuck the plan, stuck the pole, didn't bother going back on the tip. Um, really enjoyed it. I mean, I hope you've enjoyed it. Give you a little bit of insight into Ireland. 
although the weather's been well yesterday when I practiced was horrendous that's why they had to move it because I was given bad weather today but the, the weather didn't come so that's that's one of them things but um, we had some rain we had some big downpours um, but if you're thinking about coming to Ireland come to Ireland have a go yeah, be it yeah, Enniskillen yeah. where we film this uh, at Ballinalec uh, that's just one of the parts of the river yeah. of the urn system that we fished or even if it's down south it's fantastic fishing and something you really need to experience so have a good Christmas everyone and catch you next time on the bank